Let's talk culture war. We have this from the New York Post. Twitter to start charging $20 per month for verification under new owner Elon Musk. Are you going to pay Tim? Yes. Oh, Mr. Moneybags. Tell me more. 20 bucks. But I've, I've <laughs> talked about this a lot before. I think that uh, verification should be literally for the purpose of verifying users. So you know who I am. So there's no impersonators. So that I can be like, this is my official account. Then Timcast News will also buy its verification and say this is the official account of Timcast News so that you don't follow the wrong account. It's, right. it's easily there for you. And the other thing people don't realize is it's going to come with features. And I think I, I, I just think it's ultimately good that regular people can choose to sign up and then you know you're talking to a real person. Makes the platform way more valuable, in my opinion. Yeah, you want to per, you know put your money where your mouth is. And, and right now, Elon Musk and Twitter are promising some, some really amazing things to combat a lot of the nonsense that we're facing. If, if they backtrack on it, if the government defeats them, if, if, they don't, if, if Elon doesn't keep his promise, I'm canceling my $20 subscription. That's yeah. another way to vote with your dollar. Um, and, and he also talked about, uh, you know, there's also rumors right now that he might bring back Vine soon. He tweeted about that it. That he's going yeah, yeah, to so. allow Mr. cryptocurrency on the platform and allow people to, of course, uh, have end-to-end -end encryption. So he's promising a lot of good things that, that I think are interesting. So far, he, he's he's doing things that, that I, I, I think are good. I, 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 I can't really criticize him. He hasn't done everything I wanted him to do, but it's still early, but, but I'm going to be keeping an eye on here's, it. Here's the best part. Many of the woke Twitterati, these journalists, they don't have 10,000 followers, 5,000, 20,000, but they're verified. Meanwhile, there were people like James O'Keefe. They banned him and he had like a million something and he was not verified. Julian mm -hmm. Assange, not verified. Mm -hmm. For these people, it's the only thing that makes them feel valuable or important. And Elon is going to rip it right out of their chests. And I want to see it. There are people that they're like, well, you know, I have a verified Twitter account with 5,000 followers. And I'm like, oh, yeah, buddy. So does my dog. My dog's verified. These people build their self-worth off of getting verified on Twitter, working for these big institutions and being prestigious. And Elon Musk is going to Kaliman, rip it right out from him. And then I'm going to laugh the whole time because they stake their value in a little stupid icon on a social media platform. Ah, thanks, Elon. I uh, went the other direction. I am not verified. I have no interest in you will asking, be. but I will only become verified if they ask me to become verified. That's okay. my goal with Twitter. Well, again, you're a free person. You can do whatever you want. And it's going to be interesting because this is a way to, to fight against the pressure that Elon Musk is facing from Bill Gates, the Washington Post, and a lot of people in the establishment that are calling for an advertiser boycott. Now with this new system, yeah, boycott all you want. We don't care. We got people paying for, for the platform if they want to use it. I'm going to be paying for it. I want to use it, especially if he keeps his promises. He does it. I'm going to boycott it. That, that was my plan up until Elon bought it was I'm never going to ask to be verified. If they come to me and they're like, OK, hey, come get verified, Ian, I would do it. Now, this sounds like an upgrade of Twitter Blue. So this is just basically the paid version of Twitter. I kind of like yeah. it because if it offers a bunch of cool features like editing, longer tweets, things like that. Longer videos. It might be just be worth paying the 20 yep. bucks for. In that case, I would maybe consider doing it. And if there, it comes with verification, then there's I'm talk of it. longer videos. Right. Um, I do think, though, you know, I guess inversely, Twitter needs to be paying its top accounts for producing content or just do some ad share or, you know, yeah, you just share some of the money. You could pay so, them a so, percentage of the Twitter blue income. Well, or Yeah, right. But based on like how many views do your tweets get or something like that. It's always tough because then people will make inflammatory tweets, maybe put legitimate fake news for the purpose of generating traffic. But that's YouTube, right? Right. So yeah. what do you do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So would you police it or would you just have, you know, just kind of a true like free for all? You allow the advertisers to advertise on who or what they want to. If they're offended by someone, you just simply give them the choice. Like, okay, I won't you be cannot, advertising yeah, with them. You can't advertise with them. Your, your content won't be shown with this person's content. He also, Elon also talked about having a, a platform where you decide your experience. So you could go into a kid's version of, of Twitter where, of course, everyone cares about your emotions. Everyone is there calling you by your pronoun and your gender. And then an adult version where West. people could actually have, you know, rational, real conversations that don't need to play by certain rules, a Wild West. And when you do that, you open kind of uh, the pathway of individuals to kind of determine their own experience, which I think is awesome and yeah. great. You could uh, gamify the system. I built a, a... And then you can't say, you can't have a person complain like, I, I, I can't, I don't want to... Go on the kids' playground then. If you don't want to, to be in the adult <laughs> section, go in, and go into <laughs> oh, the yeah. little playground pit here. On, on Mines, I built a gamification model for Mines where you would 
would basically get tokens for using the site. You could use these tokens to buy or to hire avatars that you'll send out on missions. And then every day you'll get a notification throughout the day. If you click the notification, it's like your hero found a sword. If, if you're there, if you don't click the notification, he doesn't find it. So you'll be like, it'll create generate attention for the site. And then when they come back from their mission, you get a, a trophy that goes in your profile. So if you want to turn on gamification mode, is there a play? And then that'd be a good way to integrate utility tokens. Well, uh, let me just invert, invert that on you. Is there a D and D social media? So, social no, but network, you could totally do that. You could battle That's against friends and use tokens to empower abilities and stuff. I would like, like, like it's, it's basically like a social media website but it's a dnd game and then dude you could augment react do augmented dnd twitter like you could look at your friend and like have a turn-based at game it'd be so fun I'd, I'd probably sign up for something like that it'd be wild and you could do, have it could be an overlay where you flip it on and then just turn it back off if you don't want it on or not i'm, I'm just saying like literally I, I'm, I bet someone's going to comment saying it exists but i'm saying like a website where you create a profile you you friend people and your profile is also a level leveling up character with notifications that like you can engage in scenarios and play games. Yeah, that'd be fun. Hell yeah, that'd be a fun game. Like, it's it, I, there's got to be something like that. I don't know, but I don't know. the model's built. So if you want to implement it, Elon, let me know. We just didn't have enough developers at Minds to put it up. It's like a it's like a social media MMO. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That'd be it's, fun. it's a good token sync because the thing about utility tokens and giving them out is you're making them, you need a way to, to deflate the, the currency. So it's a good way for people to put tokens back into the system. Right. Kids version. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, Russell Brand gave your I word tweet props yesterday on his YouTube segment. <laughs> I just started tweeting words like none of those broke the rules. I was like, I said, can I tweet naughty words now when Elon bought, we finally closed the deal. And I started tweeting words that are questionable, like I guess, for Twitter's rules or something. But I didn't, it's, it's like, you can basically tweet most words without actually getting in trouble on YouTube. I mean, I mean on, on Twitter. Mm. That's how most of these platforms work anyway. Have you seen more engagement in the past week or so? Well, I gained a bunch of followers. Yeah. I guess people are I, coming back. I've seen back. a spike too. I did as well, yep. Yeah. yeah, without tweeting very much, so. Yep. Yeah, I just think what happened with Twitter is that when they realized journalists were using it, that was their that was their core user base. Started yeah. pandering to them. It's their echo chamber, and then it's how stories are generated. The reason so Twitter talked about removing follower counts, retweet counts, and uh, and making verification for everybody, and they just decided never, not to do it. And the reason because the journalists like the gamified retweet counts, like bragging about their follower counts, and they like the fact that the verification badge is a status symbol that's granted to you, yes. like knighthood. Yeah. So they would never give up on it. I think if Elon Musk strips all that away, uh, here's what I say. Elon should remove follower counts, remove retweet counts, put all those analytics behind the scenes. You can find someone's profile. You don't know how many followers they have. You can follow them if you want. You can see how many followers you have. The public doesn't see it. You tweet something out, they can retweet it if they want. No one can see how many retweets it has. Why? Why is the re retweet icon got a number on it? What's the point of that? It's for can, the, the user can use that number to inflate their own value if they want to get. You can an see it investment. behind the scenes. Why is it being shown? So you're to the right. Public? You could. Yeah. You don't need to be public. It's not like I saw your tweet and need to know that it was also a part of you know ten thousand other accounts broadcast. That makes no sense. It's a, it's a it's a value symbol. Sure. The same thing with ratios. Twitter intentionally built the system for the quote unquote ratio. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to show me a number of replies. Right. Well, unless Just you want, show me the replies. Unless you want drama. Unless exactly. you want to see who got ratioed. Unless mm -hmm. you want to start controversy. And, and I think these organizations have been doing that deliberately. They have been pushing, I think, a divide and conquer agenda that makes people hate each other and fight each other based on trivial differences that don't really matter in our lives. And I think at the end of the day, it, it wasn't an accident. I think the FBI, D, DHS is like, hey, we got to make sure that these people fight each other so they don't really see what's really happening to them. And that's a perfect way of doing that. And now we have the proof. The government has been controlling the big tech <laughs> social media companies. So it's fair to assert right now that they are the ones pushing for ratios, pushing for hatred, pushing for all the divisiveness and all the drama that, of course, captivates big tech social media. I just hope Elon's ready for the storm. I mean, it's just beginning. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, they're not going to let him just, you know, purchase yep. a piece of the cathedral, as you said the other day. I mean, that's he's got a piece of it now. And, and they're not <laughs> they're not just going to let that go quietly. You can't hold it. It's like the one ring. Elon, you need to disperse it, melt Elon, it into dust. Elon knows who Michael Malice is. He needs to call up Michael and say, let's talk. Michael needs to give, start advising him on how to deal with a lot of this stuff. Yes.
decentralize the algorithm. You want all this stuff out of your own hands, Elon. You don't want to hold people's passwords. You don't want to hold people's names and addresses and, and stuff like that. Get an email, email verification. Keep it as, as baseline as possible and get that stuff out. Uh, like, uh, well, I'll, I'll go into more detail later. I think he's going to try and turn it into X.com, right? He made X yeah, holdings right. to, to acquire it. Into PayPal. He, right. He wants to make it the one app for everything, yeah. like the, WeChat. The American WeChat. And that's, that's kind of scary if you think about it. It's, I, I don't, look, there's a lot of good things coming from Elon, but I don't, I don't completely trust him. He's got business dealings in China. Right. Mm-hmm. I, is this necessarily going to be a good thing? If we, if, if we end up using Twitter, think about how bad Twitter is with censorship. And we're hoping Elon fixes it. It's still bad. Viva Fry got suspended for tweeting about the Paul Pelosi thing, which is BS. Yeah. Imagine you start using that for your payment processing and for everything, and the censorship never gets fixed. So I'm not entirely confident. It's like he's in a position like George Washington was after the revolution where he's the, the now he's the president and they want him to become king. People will be like, hey, just you be the one in charge. Don't do it, dude. You got to give up the power. He's got a part in the political prisoners. He has to unban a lot yes. of these people. But right. how is he going to deal with the Department of Homeland Security breathing down his neck being like, no, you're not. When so much of his businesses are dependent on government contracts. Hmm. Yep. So SpaceX, especially. Point. Yeah. Just, you know, they're going to so, come after him. They're going to punish him. Sure. Yeah. All the satellites that they're building. You know, sure. All and the his, tech that they're building. His kind of dalliance with transhumanism is is concerning as well. Yeah. You know, yep. with Neuralink and you know his business in China. It's 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 not a, you know, it, it's not a good guy. Be skeptical guy of everyone, obviously. But when it comes to the battle of ideas, he is pro- he is proposing amazing ideas, yeah. important ideas that no one else is, and they're crucially important for our uh, existence right now. Agreed. He, so his battles against Bill Gates, his battles against depopulation, his battles against you know the 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 real things that are coming and and are going to be hurting humanity, I think are important. <clears throat> and you know I'm I'm still not 100 percent convinced. I'm still skeptical of him, but I think so far he's one of the best things we have right now when it comes to ensuring freedom of speech. No uh, human has that can handle that responsibility, though. You need to disperse the a robot. You're right. It, it should be an automated system, like like a, like, a, like a department of of Homeland Security, right? Like a big federal government <laughs> no, that knows, you know, government bureaucrats sitting in offices deciding what people, you know, can and cannot do, right? No, no, no. It's a system where everybody holds their own private keys and can log in with their own private data and log out. And no, there's no central um, repository of data that the DHS can go after. You just say, I can't give you the info because I don't have it. I never did. That's the point. If you have it, they will come and take it. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.